Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I was actually getting ready and then I thought, wait, let me stop because honestly the most requested video I get asked to make is my skincare routine. It's weird. It's not, it has nothing to do with makeup. It's just my skincare routine. So I thought, let me break it down for you. And then I started gathering all my products and I was like, I use this much stuff on my face. It is crazy. So I'm just going to kind of guide you to what I do. You don't have to use the same items. I'm going to talk a little bit about ingredients and why I like them for my skin. And that would be that. One of the things I, I always find is when I do a, um, I do like a, full face video or I do a uh, foundation review, people always question me like, do, why, like you have foundation on before you put foundation. And I'm like, no, I, I don't. Why would I do that? So this is my skin. This is all my skin. There's nothing on my skin. Um, I have combination skin. I get oily through the T-zone. I do have pores around my, like on my nose, basically a little bit here. I do have sometimes a little bit of a texture problem uh, more around my jaw area and I get red. I'm prone to redness really easily, especially around this area. And even if I like rub my face, it will go red, like in, like just like a little bit of like a touching. I'm kind of sensitive in that fact. Um, so that's kind of a breakdown of my skin. When I was younger, when I was in high school, I used to break out really bad on my chin, almost like cystic acne underneath the skin. I think a lot of it was like not taking care of my skin. I never even used to wash my face. So my first job, um, my first, well, I've had jobs before this, but my first like real like job other than bartending and stuff was at Shoppers Drug Mart. Uh, that's where I started. I'm still with them today. And um, that's when I started to really learn about skincare. And uh, I, I never even did anything prior to that. I barely even, I think I washed my face with Cetaphil. I use spectro, spectro pads and I don't even think I moisturize my face. I started learning about skincare, understanding skincare. And that's when I really started taking care of my skin. Obviously there's perks with the job. You get free stuff to try all the time. Um, you also get a discount there. So it's great that you can like, you know, try at not a full price because skincare can be very, very expensive. Um, so it's really important to find what works for you. But the thing with me is that I'm always trying new items all the time just because people send me things or I receive things. It's just crazy. So I'm always trying something new, but I can tell you that over the years, I know it works for me and I have like my favorite products. So I'm kind of going to break it down for you what I've been using like steadily, um, and just talk to you about that. So if you would like to know my skincare routine, please keep watching. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the morning. In the morning, I always wash my face. It is super important to wash your face. Wash your face. A lot of people think you shouldn't wash your face because you don't have any makeup on, but you're sweating overnight. Um, I don't know. I just like to get all the bacteria off my face in the morning from overnight, you know, whatever. And plus I apply my skin cream overnight, so then I want to kind of just start fresh in the morning. So I've been using this cleanser for the longest time now. I love this cleanser, so I always use this in the morning. And I pretty much use it at night too, depending on if I wash my face in the shower, I'll use something else just because I have something in there. But the cleanser that I absolutely love is the Lancome Meal Mousse. It's a foaming cleansing makeup remover with uh, honey and it's a rinse off formula. So honestly, it just comes out really, really thick. I use one pump, so this does last me a long time. One pump is good enough. You massage it into the skin, it kind of lathers up, and that's how I wash my face. My face feels super clean after, but not to the point where it's like tight feeling. It just feels like a nice clean. So that's the first step I do in the morning. Now, I don't always apply a toner, so I'm kind of like 50-50 on the toner thing. Um, it's like not a necess it's not like a necessity for me, but I do like using it sometimes. Like this morning I did use this. So I've been really into the Lee's Watcher. This is a soothing rose petal gel toner. So what you do is you just kind of plop it on your hand. You don't want to use a cotton pad because it's just going to absorb everything. Plus it's kind of like a jelly texture. I just put it on my hand and I press it into the skin. So that's what I do for my toner. If I do use one, I do like this one. So I've been using two serums for a while now. I like both of them. Both are kind of different. This first one I have is Aromatica Beauty and Safety Rose Absolute First Serum. It's brightening and revitalizing. It kind of comes out like a watery kind of serum, almost like really liquidy. So I kind of just put it on my hand and I press it into my skin. Um, it's from Korea. It's organic. It's supposed to be enriched with essence containing uh, a rose, super berry complex, and it provides nutrition and hydration. So it's great if your skin is feeling a little bit dry. The one I've been loving, 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 which is like a different spectrum, is this guy right here. This is the Lancome Genifique Advanced Serum. I've been using this for years. I love it. It is pricey, but it's so good. It's supposed to... Um, it's supposed to help change the DNA into your skin. I, I don't really know how it works. They explain it to me, but I don't get it. So it basically changes the DNA before it hits the surface of the skin. So it's like, 
It's repairing before it even gets to the surface, if you know what I mean. It has the most luxurious texture to it. It makes your skin feel like actual silk. So I have been loving this one, and to be honest with you, I've just kind of like put this on the back burner lately because I've just... I don't know, my skin just feels so great with this. And just recently I was actually gifted a jade roller. So I don't use this all the time because this is a little bit more time consuming, but this morning I did use it. So I put the serum on my face and then I just took my jade roller. They say keep it in the fridge. Um, and then I kind of just worked it into my skin like this. And honestly, it just feels so cold. It's so, so nice. Like, it's so soothing. The feeling of this is great. So if you do have time in the morning, maybe use a little jade roller. I don't think this one's expensive. I looked it up online. I think you can get it on Amazon for like $20. So, you know, I know there's a little bit more expensive ones. The jade is probably a little bit more high quality. But anyways, this one does a trick for me. It's really nice. So then what I do next is I flip it over and I use my eye cream. So usually in the morning, I like to use more of a gel texture eye cream. I find the gel texture a little bit more soothing. It's a little bit more hydrating. I don't like anything too rich because I'm applying makeup over top of it. I really don't want a really creamy eye cream underneath. I do have a little bit of darkness. Uh showing through here there's nothing i can really do about it a lot of time it's hereditary you can get more sleep drink more water i don't know but it is what it is so the two eye creams that i've been really really loving they're two different ones so this one right here is almost done i used this this morning this is the bioderma and cboi eye contour gel for sensitive intolerant skin it's great for anti-puffiness it soothes and it moisturizes so i take a little pea size amount of this in the morning I kind of like dot it around my eye area. You don't want to take it any higher than this bone here, just because sometimes if you take eye cream too high, it can actually clog your uh, tear duct here. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to clog anything. So keep it here because it does kind of lift anyways in time. So I put some on and then I took the other side of my jade roller and I decided to go along the eye contour to really de-puff the eye. Because this is cold, it really kind of takes away puffiness and de-puffs. So I always use my eye cream. I usually tend to go for eye creams that I can use on my eyelid. And I don't mean I put it all over here. I don't go there. I go on the brow bone. So what I do is I kind of like push it around this area. And I like to do that just because this is a very sensitive uh, area. Your skin is really, really thin. I like to take care of that. You probably would see, your, when you start to age over time, you see the, the difference. I even see a difference sometimes when I smile now. I have a little bit of a line going on here. So, you know, it's really fragile. I like to take care of that area. So if you do skip an eye cream, I highly suggest you don't because I do think it is important. And an eye cream is formulated different than a face cream. It's supposed to be uh, non-pore blocking and it's just supposed to be a little bit more gentle. So I do highly suggest one. If I really want to go in with an anti-aging eye cream that I've been really enjoying, this is the Lee's Watch A Age Control Supreme. It has exclusive concentrated Labrador tea extract. So this is more of an anti-aging one. Very, very similar in texture. So good for hydration, good for hydration and anti-age. So if you're getting a little bit more mature, this is a great eye cream for you. But again, I apply that every single morning before my makeup, done. I usually do this step also every morning. This is the Emberly Secret de maculars i have no idea basically it's the artist secret it's radiant eye this right here is not supposed to be like an eye cream it's more of like a treatment so you're supposed to apply your eye products like i have but then you go in with this stick and it's a very cooling cooling stick it's so it's so nice so it feels like ice cold around your eye i go like this and what it's supposed to do is it's supposed to obviously hydrate it helps your concealer go on really really nice but it also is supposed to give you like a temporary lifting effect which I've actually noticed does kind of work. Um, I use it in store. When I used to work in store, I used to use it on customers and kind of like show them the difference between one eye and just push it in. And it actually kind of gives them more of like, it fills in a bit. It kind of makes it a little bit more tacky and a little bit more radiant and dewy. So I do apply that every single morning pretty much before I use my concealer. So those, those are my like eye creams that I really go towards. Okay, so then I move into a face cream. So I have been using two uh, quite frequently. So the first one that I'm like really obsessed with is the Shiseido Benefiance Wrinkle Smoothing Day Cream. It has SPF 23 in it. It's really nice. I only use this during the day just because of the SPF. I don't want SPF on my skin overnight. I do find I tend to break out from SPF, but this one right here, it doesn't make me break out. I know SPF 23 is not like the best. You should be doing at least a 30 
or higher. So this one's a little bit under, but I know that the more SPF you add in a product, the more the texture is a little bit more greasy or not as pleasant to use. But this one honestly goes on. It's very silky. It does kind of leave though a little bit of a slick to your face. I am combination. It does not bother me. I don't break out from it, but it does leave more of like a slick. So I did apply this this morning. I rub it all over. I also go down my neck. Now speaking of the neck, I also always use it neck cream and I've been using this one for the past like while. Um, this one right here is the Neostrata. This is the triple firming neck cream. People think I'm crazy. They're like, you're so young. Why do you use a neck cream? Well, to be honest with you, you need to start early because if you have the damage there, it's it's, it's too late. Like you can't really do much about it. So what I do is I, I even notice I have more crepiness in between here now as I get older because I used to do a lot of tanning and like I have actual fine lines that go down between my chest. So I do notice that. Also, the younger generation, neck cream is also good for you to use because you're always looking down at your phone. So we're actually developing these things that they're calling now tech neck. It's two lines, which I actually do have because I look at my phone so much from looking down. So, you know, it's just important to kind of hydrate this area. I really do like the Neostrata one. It is a little bit pricey. I also like the Strivectin one as well, which is also pricey. Um, but I do find a neck cream lasts me a lot longer than a face cream just because I find you get a little bit more product in a neck cream and also I don't use as much because I just kind of go down but I do work it all over my chest just not this area I go down this way also helps with sunspots and aging so that definitely I do I do I do use a neck cream I do another face cream I'll be using in the morning if I don't use SPF for some reason I do really like the origin ginseng energy boosting gel moisturizer if I do use a moisturizer on the regular I always usually go for a gel texture I don't go for a rich texture not even in the winter time I find it's too heavy for me I don't like anything my skin for some reason hates shea butter on my face I don't know what it is so if a product really has a high amount of shea butter I tend to break out from it, so I always kind of look for that ingredient in um, the packaging. So a gel texture for me is a lot uh, more pleasant, especially in the morning. It's cooling. It just feels more pleasant. Plus, I put so much makeup on that I don't want like layers and layers and layers. So this one I really do like. It also smells like an orange dream heaven, so you can't go wrong with that. I also forgot to mention too, when I first wake up in the morning, I always usually spray this on my face before I put any of my skincare on. So this is the Carez Hydrating Face Mist. It's H2O Rose. Um, what's really great about this face mist is that a lot of them, the first ingredient is just water. The first ingredient in this product is actually rose water. So at least I know I'm getting a high concentrate of rose water. This is a little bit more expensive. It's about the $40 mark. It's organic. It's a little bit more natural, but I do really like this. I like just, it just feels refreshing. You can apply it too after you apply your skincare. I don't know, like just as a refresher. I really like it. You can even set your makeup with this product, but I just like the way it just kind of invigorates me, makes me feel good in the morning. So I always apply this before I start my skincare. I forgot to tell you, sorry. So the first thing I do at night is I take a little face wipe. So I use the Vichy 3-in-1 face wipe. So I always take my makeup off just because I'm wearing a lot. If I'm not, if I don't have a lot of makeup on that day, I will probably skip this step. But when I do have a lot, I don't like to ruin my face gloss because they just get demolished. So I will use this first, either this one or the Neutrogena one. I always go back and forth between. Then I like to wash my face in the shower. That's usually what I do. I have just all different types of cleansers. What I look for in a cleanser is more medical grade. I look for stuff without a lot of fragrance. I don't buy a cleanser because it smells nice, basically. I buy it because I like the ingredients in it. I use a lot of Neostrata cleansers. Right now I have the Lise Wache one, the one that's from Korea. I've also been obsessed with this one too. This is the Boschka Purifying Gel Cleanser. Usually I go for a gel cleanser and I like a cleanser that does foam. I just find it makes my skin feel a lot nicer. So I'll go on with a cleanser after I remove all my makeup. Now, this next step I don't do every single night, but I might do it every third night. So what I like to do is I like to go in with a face scrub. So the two I've been loving, I've been obsessed with this one for years. This is the uh, Neostrata Glycolic Microdermabrasion Polish. This is actually a sample size. I've run out of the big one. So this is so good. It feels like sand. It's very gritty. It gets, ri it gets rid of all texture. It gets rid of all bumps off your face. This is amazing. And I kind of, it's, it's a little bit pricey. It's in the $80 range. I believe $70, $80. Very, very expensive. It's a great investment. It will last you well because you're not using a lot and you're not using it all the time. But exfoliating your face, I honestly think it's so important. You have to get rid of all the clogged dead skin 
Um, it really makes a difference around my nose area, so I do highly suggest that. I've been also loving this one, which is a definitely a cheaper alternative. You get so much more in it. You get 240 mil. It's the Philosophy, the Micro Delivery Exfoliating Face Wash. Again, it's very, very abrasive, but it's also gentle at the same time, and it smells like oranges. So, you know, if you're on a budget, definitely check this one out. It pretty much performs the same as this one. This one's a little bit more medical grade, I would, I would say, but this one does an amazing job at exfoliating and just making your skin feel so soft. So that's the next step I do when I do use a face scrub. So sometimes when I get out of the shower as well, if I like want to make sure that my skin has nothing on it, it's totally clean, I'll take a cotton pad and then I go in with my Bioderma. This is the uh, micellar H2O solution, Sensibio solution. I've been using this for years. It's great. It doesn't irritate. It doesn't burn. It has cucumber in it. It's very soothing. You can use it on your eyes. It takes off everything. It's gentle. They have different formulations of this. They have an oily skin. They also have a new hydrating one. So definitely if you're looking for a cleansing water, check this out. It's affordable. You get a great amount, 500 mil. I think it's around the $20 mark. So you can't really go wrong. So that would be the next step if I want to make sure everything is off my face. Um, the next step I go into, this is again, not something I do every single night. I kind of maybe might do it every third night, depending on what my skin needs. I can always feel if my skin needs something. So I do go in sometimes with a, like a peel or like an exfoliating toner. Um, so the one peel I absolutely love that I ran out of was the Neostrata. That is the anti-aging peel. It is so good. You basically um, you kind of shake it, you put it on your skin, you rub it in, you let it sit for like 20 minutes. Uh, it does kind of give you like a burning sensation, not to the point where you're like, I think I need to wash this off, but it does give you like this tingling very very tingling sensation but when you wipe it off your face when you wash it off your skin just is like a baby's bottom it is so nice i used to probably do that like once a week once every week and a half but another one i really like to use is the vichy this is the idelia peeling radiance activating night peel um, this is also great you apply it with a cotton pad and you do not wash this one off so it's a little bit more gentle it doesn't give you like that super super tingly feeling it, it it has like blueberry extract, there's a couple different things in here, but it really does give your skin a really nice exfoliant, but it's more of a gentle. So if you have really sensitive skin, I probably would stay away from the Neostrata. Maybe try this guy because it is a little bit more gentle. I also love this one. This is the Exfoliating Solution 8% Glycolic Acid from Reversa. This guy is also amazing. Um, it's Canadian made. It's, it's kind of pricey actually. I think it's around the $40 mark, cruelty free vegan. I don't use this every night because of the 8% glycolic. That could be a little bit much using that all the time, but it's good for somebody with combination skin that you kind of just want to get rid of the oil, kind of give your skin a light, mild exfoliation. Uh, I would go with something like this, but love both these products. Also love that peel from Neostrata. So those are like my go-to kind of like toners that act as a peel great if i have some sort of breakout i always use a spot treatment these are my two favorite spot treatments by far to use in my face first we have the clinique acne solutions clearing gel just a clearing gel like it says you put it on your finger and dot it on really really great love this this comes in two sizes this is the bigger one i but this one here is new to me which i actually been loving and i think if i had to pick between the two i'm actually going to choose the clearance because it is cheaper and i find it's less harsh on my skin and it doesn't dry my skin out as much as something like this does so this is the clarins clear out um, it targets imperfections and basically it has extract of meadow sweet i don't even know what that is meadow sweet no idea anyways what i do is i just dot it on the areas that i need and i find that they, these kind of things do make a great difference when you are breaking out or have a little bit of a spot you want to get rid of so honestly invest in a clearing gel this will last you so long this one i think lasts me for like almost a year eight months so honestly great investment buy one i'm telling you it'll be your best friend when you're breaking out um for my eye cream at night i do like to use something a little bit more rich so i always go in either with the clarence extra firming eye cream i love this one it's so good it's definitely more of a creamier texture than the ones i use in the morning it's supposed to help with radiance and wrinkles love this stuff i also use if i want to kind of like treat myself i go in with um the elizabeth arden advanced ceramide capsules for their eye serums but i just use this as my eye cream so they are pricey that's why i kind of like treat myself with them you break open the capsule and you rub it kind of like press it all around the eye it's very oily in texture but it's very very hydrating so if you find you have a lot of dryness around the eye try something like this because it's super super hydrating this is great for anti-aging again though a little bit pricey so i kind of like to use it you know 
every once in a while. If you do have super dry eyes, you could apply this first and then apply an eye cream over top of it if you would like, but I just kind of do it by itself. Another eye cream too that I've been loving is also the Verify 2020 Eye Cream. It's more, again, like a thicker eye cream. This one's more natural. It has more natural ingredients in it. It's supposed to help with darkness, puffiness, wrinkles. It's supposed to do it all. So honestly, these are like my three go-to eye creams for nighttime. I've been loving these guys. And look, they all have gold on the top, so I just feel like it's like just right for me, you know? I'm just, just, just prestige. Yeah, that's what this is. So for my night cream, I honestly don't have anything like special that I've been using. I've been using that one that I was talking about from Origins at night as well. So I don't really have like a, you know, a specific night cream. Again, I like to use a gel texture at night as well, but I also love using this product. I do not use it every night, but I pretty much use it every like third night. So when I do use this, this is the um, Strivectin Starlight Retinol Night Oil. I don't use anything over top of this. This is my basically my night cream. Uh, it's an orange oil. This is all natural in color. You put it on your face and you kind of just smooth it over. It gives you like this instant beautiful radiance to your skin. But it's a retinol that is very active, but it's very, very... Um, not abrasive on the skin. I find some retinols are too harsh, they kind of like burn, they kind of irritate my skin. This one right here is just doesn't do that. I find it does make a great difference for me with the pores around my nose and also the texture on my face. So if you're looking for a great oil for nighttime, this one's excellent. There's also another one I was using, the green bio, I think it's like bio essence, um, one more natural, it has vitamin C in it, so I've been really liking kind of oils at night. Uh, and this one doesn't stain your pillow, so it's really, really great. So I love a good nighttime oil. Even though I am oily, oils do not make you oilier. That's kind of like a myth. So if you're looking for something that's really just like super slick on your face and makes you feel like a golden goddess, this would be it. And then we cannot forget, um, I always use a thermal spray water as well. So I, I go back and forth between Aven, uh, Vichy, and La Roche-Posay. So right now I have the La Roche-Posay one. I do this even before I put any of my skincare on. Again, it's like the, the Carrez Rose one, but just like, I just, it's just, just a beautiful mist of mineral water on your face. It's so freaking refreshing. If you don't use something like this, I'm telling you, use it. It's also good if you also have dry eyes and you feel very irritated around your eyes. You could spray it in your eyes. People even use it down their throat if they have a sore throat because of all the mineral properties in it. it comes from France, comes from their own springs, but honestly, there's so many great properties to this. You need to look it up on the internet. It's not just a gimmick. It's not just a hoax. This is really good water in a can, okay? And I use all the time, I use different sheet masks all the time, the ones from Korea. Usually when I do buy them, I make sure they are from Korea. So I just have a whole bunch of different wide varieties of them. I don't really have a brand that I go to, but I do use a sheet mask probably twice a week. And then I also have the under eye patches that I buy from different brands as well that I might use in the morning before I get ready if, it's, if I'm going to a special event. And I do have three masks. I have lots of masks that I like to apply, but these are like my top three masks that I use. So the first one is the Boschka Magic Super Antioxidant Mask. It dries down like clay. So I do only use this when I feel like I'm breaking out. So when I'm breaking out, I will use this. And sometimes I only use it around this area of my face. Um, another great mask for hydration if you feel like you're really, really dry. I've been loving the Vichy Lift Active Hylou Mask. This one goes on like a gel, basically. You don't have to wash it off. If you have any excess, you can massage it in. I do kind of wash mine off though. I don't really like to like leave it on my skin, but I will leave this on for like, a, like an hour straight and let it soak in. And another great treatment mask if you are breaking out is the Glam Glow. This is the um, Super Mud Clearing Treatment. I do love this stuff as well. It's kind of new to me, but I've been really, really liking the way it makes my skin feel and it actually clears out my pores. So those are like my top three masks that I use all the time. Another thing too that I want to mention is I use a face cloth every night to wash my face and what I want to say about a face cloth is that after you use it one time, do not use it again. It will hold bacteria. So I think some people just kind of like reuse their face cloth maybe for like, you know, a couple days or even the week, which I do not do. So I use it one time, I wring it out, I hang it kind of on my railing and then I throw it into the laundry. I do not reuse them. That's one thing you're not supposed to do. Also make sure you're washing your pillowcases probably like bi-weekly or even weekly because when you, sw when you go to bed, you sweat and you are putting bacteria onto the pillowcase. So if you find you are breaking out a bit, Try switching up your pillowcases and washing them more often. And I also only use hypoallergenic um, detergent. I don't use anything with smell just because I don't need that and I don't want to be smelling anything at night and I find it irritates my, my body and my face. So I do everything hypoallergenic, no scent. Okay, and because this video has been long enough, I have one more product that I need to talk about just because it is part of my skincare routine. This is the Silken Revit. 
it is amazing so basically this is disgusting I can't even show you this that tip right there is supposed to be great it is white from all like the dead crap coming off my face I have to change the filter so this machine is a microdermabrasion machine at home they give you little filters that you put in the machine that I just lost on my leg um, they are supposed to be gray, but mine right now is absolutely disgusting because I have all this crap on my face. So what you do is you want to change your filter quite a bit actually, almost every time you use it. They give you different heads. So this one is the fine tip head right here. You put it on and then you basically turn on the machine and you press go. And what you do is you hear that noise. It just honestly, like I'm sucking, it sucks all the crap off your skin sucks away the dead skin, sucks away everything. And it really does work. This is not a gimmick. And I also use, they have like a, a bigger head that I'll use across my face. But for this one, I really like using this fine tip for the chin and around the nose area. But after you're done, you will notice such a difference in texture in your skin. And even my pores, they're like pretty much totally cleaned out. So I really love using this. The biggest mistake I used when I first received a machine like this, I have the original one. This is like more of the upgraded one. Um, I left it in one part of my skin for too long. Like I was like, I need to move it. And I actually developed bruises because the sucking mechanism on this is very, very extreme. So you have to kind of like keep going with it, but you won't bruise unless you like are leaving it there like I did because I didn't read the instructions because I never do. But this to me is super important. I find it makes the biggest difference in my skin. I think it ranges for about $100, but it's totally worth it for me. So secret weapon right here. Okay. Okay, so this is the end of my video. This is how I keep my skin so fresh and so clean. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.